This is Front Street, downtown Wilmington. About four in the morning. The eye has already passed through. And this is the next level of winds coming up from the south. And you can see it's taking some stuff with it. Uh, you ever seen anything like this? No, sir, I haven't. You? See, some of this you just wouldn't want to drive through. That and maybe everything will be all right. Oh, I got nowhere to go. <laughs> you have nowhere to go. And everything you own is here. Right here. Hard to believe it's been 10 years. It really, you know, it's, um, time does pass quickly. Time seemed to stand still that third week of September in 1999 when Joe Alby spent five days running his boat around Greenville, looking with awe at what nature wrought. If you watch the news at night, which I do, you, you see flooding all over the world. Did I ever expect to see eight feet of water on Mumford Road? <laughs> Absolutely not. The storm came in from the south, kicking Oak Island aside as it headed inland. Oh, it was something to see. Huh? This island was, it was a pitiful looking mess. I, I remember riding up the beach and I looked through a house. You could see all the way through the house and there was a table and chairs sitting there. One chair sitting at the table. That was about the only thing where it was supposed to be on the island, but they were lucky. They only had to deal with winds. Floyd lurched inland and dropped almost two feet of rain that immediately turned to find its way home, back east towards the ocean, accumulating as it went, turning rivers already at flood stage into once in a millennium disasters. In the months after the floods, Carol Van figured, It's gonna take me a good two, three years to recover from the situation. 10 years later, he realizes that was optimistic. We'll open this one up. Van does flight training, crop dusting, and just about everything else she can do with an airplane. The 14 feet of water in his hangar 10 years ago nearly destroyed his business. It was originally up in this area. If you leave it there, it's kind of a reminder. I don't know whether I leave it as a reminder or not, <laughs> because some things, you know, we go through, we, we don't necessarily want to remember. Monica Barkley. It took, everybody just was in shock. Can't forget. It was just a matter of survival. I want to notify Green County. When we met her 10 years ago, she and her neighbors could only stand by and watch as the floodwaters broke out of the wildlife pond in Wayne County near Goldsboro. Yeah, I was buried a dam broke about 30 minutes ago. And it's on the way over here now. The 111's flooding bad. This is a man-made disaster. They could have done something to, for, to prevent this. As it was, that white building you see, which held a quarter million dollars of equipment that Monica and her husband owned, choked on the brown water that enveloped it. it had snakes and fish and everything was just covered over. And that familiar water line to remind her of what happened. So how often do you walk in, see that, and think of those days? Uh, every time, and I come in rarely because I, memories are not so wonderful. Nor for David Haddock. I would have never thought I would see water where I saw water was there. I mean, who would have thought you'd be driving a boat down 264 Highway? Would you? Haddock farms land near Greenville that the Queen of England bequeathed to his family centuries ago. During the floods, he and Joe Alby found a friend's herd of cattle caught in the rising water. We spent a better part of a, you know, half a day moving the cows uh, up on some fairly dry ground, we thought at the time, um, and left them there. The next morning, the cows were swimming. They weren't nowhere for them to go. Even the few who thought they found safety in a mobile home eventually succumbed. 200 cattle gone while well, Haddock and Alby were busy trying to convince people to get out of their flooded homes. I've been to houses all over town and people would come to the door and I'd say, look, y'all need to get in the boat. And you know, some just wouldn't, they say, we're gonna stay. And like I said, the worst part, cows didn't have a boat. <laughs> 10 years later, Haddock looks back stoically. Oh yeah, I mean, they were, they were about as helpless as they could be. I mean, cow sticking his head out of a mobile home, wonder that's not, that's not fun. <laughs>